ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? The show starts in three, two, one, go. Good morning, Canesport. It's March 17th, 2022. I'm Gary Furman, the publisher of Canesport.com, joined as always by our managing editor, Matt Shodell, as we discuss the news of the day, presented as always by Life Wallet, where the time is now to take charge of your personal health. And uh, Matt, the time is now for you to start fighting for some respect in your house. I mean, I'm I'm not I'm not gonna you know be too lengthy here because I got crucified on the comments on YouTube yesterday by one of our loyal viewers who uh, took exception to the fact that your kids photobombed our our podcast yesterday and uh, thinks we spent too much time on family. But this morning you've been banished to the outdoors because everybody wants to sleep late inside. Yeah. And I apologize, but I got to get to the airport because I'm going to Greenville to join the basketball team and – you know, we got to we had to get the show the, the show in before I leave. Listen, man, these kids these kids they stay up till four in the morning. I uh, literally I wake up at two forty five in the morning, and um my my bed is like I feel vibrations in my bed. They're blasting the speakers on my deck, uh, listening to music. God knows what else they're doing. I literally text my son. I'm like, turn off the music, and and he's like, hey, that's enough. That's enough. We can't go any further. We'll oh. upset. We'll, we're gonna, I forget his name, oh. but I don't want to upset All right, anybody. Get, All right. Like, no, like story, no story for you. You ruined it for everybody. No, that, that, yeah, that's enough. No more, no more family stories. Let's get nothing right to about, the... Nothing about the cops going to jail. No stories for you. <laughs> All right. Hey, I mentioned I'm, I'm heading over to the airport. Um, heading to Greenville for uh, March Madness tomorrow. And uh, Matt, uh, you were at the departure of the team on campus yesterday afternoon. And... Um, I watched from afar, but I'm hearing a familiar theme, both when I spoke to Jim Laranega on Tuesday and what they were saying yesterday. And there is a clear effort here by the coaching staff to keep these kids calm, to not let them get too excited about being in the NCAA tournament, because let's face it, it's the first time in four years that they've been there. And they have, might be a little anxious about it, and it might it might be a little bit too keyed up. And um, Jim Laranega is a big believer that you got to be on an even keel, you got to have um, composure and poise to win in the NCAA tournament. And he's just trying to keep the kids calm. It's already a success for the team. The team's already won because they ate at Ruth's Chris Steakhouse last night. <laughs> what else do you need? You don't need to win any NCAA games. You're going to Ruth's Chris. The time is now to go to Ruth's Chris Steakhouse. <laughs> um, I can't tell a story about Ruth's Chris. That's that's forbidden. No, no good. Yeah, let's stay. We, let's stay on point today. I'm still a little wounded about the assault. It's great, it's a great story. I mean, it was an emotional assault that we endured yesterday from this guy. Um, oh, for God's sake! All right, but, so you don't hear about my, you, won't, you, won't hear about, you won't hear about my half court shot for a million dollars with the Heat game and my consolation prize at Ruth's Chris <laughs> and what happened to Ruth's Chris. Then that's your problem, <laughs> Mister. Whatever. He's really not hear what happened to Ruth's Chris. Go ahead. No, forget it. So no, wait. I really do. No, you I think everybody me, would gave, like listen, to hear you gave me You gave me two tickets to a Heat game years ago at the old arena. And I took my wife. And they came with me before the game. And they said, would you be interested in doing the half-court shot? Or three, whatever, uh, full-court shot or three-quarters court shot. I can't remember what. It was a long shot. to win a million dollars. I'm like, sure. They're like, did you ever play any you know, high school or college basketball? I said, look at me. Do I look like I played high school or college basketball? Um, I had to actually say, no, I did not after that. And then uh, at, at I think it was at halftime or one of the timeouts, they take me down to the court, and I it was a three-quarter court shot, and I, and I shot it submarine style, and it hit right on, on the line off the back, right in the, in the middle of the box, and then it hit off the back iron and bounced off the front rim and out. Or I wouldn't even be here. I'd be a gazillionaire. I would have invested a million dollars in Amazon back then. I would be probably running all the different networks that cover recruiting and whatever, you know. But it bounced out, and they're, and they're like, oh, you know what? You know, you, you get a, a free throw as a consolation, you know, and if you get the free throw and you get a Ruth's Chris gift card. And I missed the free throw worse than I missed the three-quarter card shot, but they felt so bad after I was so close to the million-dollar shot that they uh, they gave me the gift card. And by the way, I was on TV. Even in New York, my friend saw me. Len Berman put me on. I was on all different shows for my amazing three-quarter shot <laughs> skills. True story. It's a true story. 
And you've had the gift card all these years. And then we went to Ruth's Chris. Keith Askins hit on my wife in the parking lot while I was getting the car afterwards. Uh, the meal was fantastic. And, uh, you know, that's the story. Uh, are you glad you heard that story or you wish you hadn't heard that story? Well, no, yeah, I could have done without it. I thought it had to do with yesterday. I, think you, <laughs> I thought you said the team went to Ruth Chris yesterday. They did, and I went to Ruth Chris 25 years ago. Oh, okay. Now, 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 yeah. now I get it. Yeah. All right. So the team, composure, poise, not getting too keyed up for March Madness. Uh, clear effort by Jim Laranega to instill that in the players. Did you get the sense that they're buying in? I got the sense they were just there for the steak. You know, uh, I just kept I'm asking not questions. talking about Ruth Chris. I'm talking I, about I, when they were leaving for the damn tournament. <laughs> well, I don't know because all I asked questions about was Ruth Chris. I'm like, what are you going to order on the menu? You know, how excited are you to go to Ruth's Chris? Um, you know, what's it like to have to play a basketball game after going to Ruth's Chris? You know, these are the questions I asked. Um, you know, they seem really excited that they were able to do Ruth's Chris. I have to get feedback. After the, after the first round game, I'm going to ask them a lot about, you know, how the meal was, what they wound up ordering. So we'll find out then. But no, I mean, they, they of course they're excited. What do you want me to tell you, Gary? Of course they're excited. They they can't wait. Uh, you know, it's a they say it's a dream. It's what every kid dreams of. Blah 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 blah. Boring, 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 boring. <laughs> so uh, you didn't walk away with any kind of real feel for whether. <laughs> I mean, I mean, are they? Did they see? I've, I've been at their past NCAA tournament departures. It was no different. Right. Uh, we're excited to go. The team we're playing is amazing. Uh, they make it sound like they have no chance. We're just happy to be there. You know, we're going to prove people wrong. There was no uh, in-depth detail game plan other than they're going to have a great game plan, which I was shocked to hear. I thought they were going to have a terrible game plan. They're going to have a great game plan, Gary. I don't know if you knew that. Uh, yeah, that's well, the I breaking news. That. That's the I breaking mean, news. These guys, Jim Laranega and Chris Caputo and these guys, they can they can scheme it up now for for, for, yeah, just, for Look, my games. point is it cracks me up how yeah. the, the talking points for er – for four football games, the opponent's amazing. You know, even if it's a D3 team. Uh, before the NCAA tournament, oh my gosh, you know, this is the greatest team ever. They have the fourth longest team in the NCAA. They have an amazing, they're, even their number two point guard is six foot nine, and, and he can play point guard. Like, oh my God, how are we ever going to get a rebound? This is ridiculous. Like, if we miss a shot, we have no chance. Uh, you know, I, I, I just, I sort of laugh because I know fans, look, you have to do the interviews. Fans get a kick out of it. And sometimes we do have very meaningful interviews. This was not one of those times. Did you Going away with the TV camera in your face was not one of those times. Did you do a bracket? Yeah, I did a bracket. So who did you take, Miami or USC? I took Miami. I took Miami to Sweet 16. Yeah, Actually, I, think I, I, I think I may have took Miami to beat Wisconsin in the Sweet 16, no less. There's really? no reason they can't beat these teams. These teams, are no, these teams are no more perfect or imperfect than Miami is perfect or imperfect. I, 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 I think Miami is a potential sleeper team in this tournament. I really do. Um, you know, that... That's why I'm so excited to be going to Greenville and and and, and watch it. I mean, we got a re, it's a regional with Auburn and and well, Duke's there on the other in the other uh, regional, and there's gonna be some good games um, tomorrow, and I'm looking forward to it. We will have coverage for those of you that care, and I know there's some that don't. You don't have to go post it on the comments on YouTube. I, I if you don't care about basketball, I I apologize, but it is March Madness. And we have to show respect to the people that do care about basketball. And that's why we're talking about it. And we will have complete coverage from Greenville um, all day uh, tomorrow uh, as the Canes return to the big dance for the first time in four years. And uh, great accomplishment for them. And we are treating it as such. But now we can go back to football because there is a lot, believe it or not, going on on the football side of the equation, too. And Matt, uh we're hot on the trail, haven't quite corralled him just yet, but uh, Mitchell Agood, the uh, defensive lineman from UCLA, is going to be visiting Miami next week. And, uh, you know, I talked to some people out at UCLA about him uh, yesterday, and they tell me this kid's a really good player, and this would be a, a very good get for Miami. He would absolutely be in the defensive line rotation uh, for the Canes, probably at end, I believe. But um, I, I'm told he also maybe can spot in a tackle, possibly, and uh, kind of like a Jake Lichtenstein uh, can be moved around on the D-line. So this would be a really good get. We've talked about uh, over and over on this show and on our message boards about how there really isn't a proven commodity on the defensive line for Miami. Not a tackle, not at end. And the more 
guys that they can bring into the competition that potentially could upgrade the position. Matt, to me, it's a total positive, and I think that's why the full court press is on Mr. Agood right now. Yeah, listen, I, I, I agree. The defensive line needs all the help it can get. This kid seems like he's a, a pretty good player. I am, I am more of a fan of this type of a get than taking, you know, a mid-major guy uh, like Antonio Moultrie, um, just because you know he's played at this level, he knows what it takes, and, and that sort of thing instead of playing against much lesser opponents. This guy maybe. wasn't there when Moultrie was there. You got it in fairness. That's about Moultrie being from from UAB. I'm talking about. No, no, but what I'm saying is th- this guy was not available for them to have to choose. No, from. I agree. I agree. Yeah. yeah, you got to take whoever you can take. I agree. No, but I'm saying is I like this type of player better than Moultrie. Is what I'm trying to say. Just not that there's anything wrong with Moultrie, but I like guys who have faced Power Five competition and done fairly well. And and this kid has done that. Um, you know, the, the, there was a lot of talk. You know, and I've been sort of following him a little bit. So there's a lot of talk when he took these trips to Washington, Oregon, that he was going to wind up at one of those two places. And we're trying to track him down because I'm just curious to see. Is he just doing his due diligence and is really leading to one of those, um, which some people seem to think, um, you know, or is it a real shot? Because, you know, he's also supposed to go to Tennessee after this as well. So did he not see what he wanted to see at Washington and Oregon? I don't I don't necessarily know. The kid's not really talking a lot. But but that was the, the sense heading into this was he was not going to wind up taking these vi- these last two visits. He was just going to go to Washington and Oregon. So, you know, I'm just trying to figure out the kid can't report till the summer. So there's no harm in taking two more visits. The question is, is he already pretty set on going to one of those two programs? Um, you know, I, I I guess we'll find out. I mean, it's not easy. I mean, it's obviously happened many times over the years, but it, it's not easy to get the West Coast kids to come all the way east, just like it's not easy to get East Coast kids to go all the way west. And, uh, you know, all those South Florida Express kids, all the skill, top skill players in South Florida were at a tournament out west this past weekend, and they all visited USC. But – and said great things. They loved USC. They want to go back. You know, um, they love their time in California. But when push comes to shove at the end of the day, um, how many of them are actually going to pick USC? And it'll be interesting to see. Uh, obviously, with Lincoln Riley uh, in charge now at USC, you know that program is going to take a, a move forward. There's no question about it. That's why they're spending all the money. I mean, the guy just moved into a $17 million home in California that you know somebody's paying for so that he would have a a beautiful palace to bring all the recruits over to. I mean, it's, it, it, it is, it's amazing. Uh, $17 million they spent on Lincoln Riley's house. Um, but anyway, but you know, it, it's, it's not easy to get these West coast kids to come all the way East. Um, you know, so we will, we, we will see you what happens here and we're going to keep trying to reach him and we'll cover his visit and all that. Um, but if Miami is able to lure him, it would be a very significant pickup. I think Matt and I agree on that. Yeah, and remember, he's also allowed, because he's not a high school kid, he can actually get an NIL deal in place, you know. So if anyone's watching and is interested in helping out Miami's program, you know, you got a company. A lot of these kids, if you if you offer them money, man, they come. So it's it's going to be really interesting to see if Oregon money up some NIL money or, or what happens. Um, and also, you know, you say the West Coast kids don't come. Transfers are a little bit of a different animal. I agree with high school kids. You've got to really fall in love with the program as a high school kid. You've got to be way above a nearer a nearer program in a kid's mind in a recruit's mind to get them but with transfers they're really just looking i need a career i need to go to the nfl where can i do that best and which system will fit me uh where's the opening right now for me to start right away is what's the easiest path the least path of resistance you know i know fans don't want to hear that and players will never say that but it's the truth for uh, a transfer no transfer wants to come in where he's a co-first team or a second team or to start fall practice uh let's just face it so we'll, we'll see what happens with this kid Right, and of course, uh, you know Josh Connerly's still out there, the the offensive lineman, um, who's also been considering Miami, and you know was weighing Oregon and USC as well. I just I think Miami's, even though he really liked it, is going to end up being too far for him. We'll see. We'll see what happens. All right, um, I've done a lot of uh, interviews the, the the this this past weekend. I did a lot of interviews with. Uh, some of the recruits that uh, that visited Rivals Camp Miami. And uh, we bring three of them actually to you today in rapid fire succession. Um, Let's begin with Santana Fleming, Matt. Um, I've always liked Santana Fleming. He's he's a real cool kid. Um, Always a very good, he's a good interview. Nice kid, good interview. Yeah, very nice kid. And um, 
it was been kind of weird because Miami is kind of like you know towards the end of the Manny Diaz era and and the transition into Mario, their recruitment of him kind of like died down a little bit. I think there were a lot of assumptions that he was going to Florida State, and um, but in talking to Santana Fleming, Mario Cristobal has picked up the chase. Is talking to him now on a regular basis. And he insists that Miami is very much under consideration for his commitment. So if he's telling the truth, maybe he's not quite the lock for Florida State that some people think he is. I mean, to, to me, Fleming isn't just important because he's, I think, a really, really good receiver. But you've just got to start getting these heritage kids. You've got to. And not just one here and there. I mean, you need to get. Start building a pipeline. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you need to get three of the kids that they're targeting. If you can, if you can get three of the five kids they're targeting, which is. Fleming, Ennis, Fletcher, Fagan, and Brown, Damari Brown, I mean, in this class, then you start just, you know, the word of mouth gets back to the school, especially if those kids are doing really well in the program. Oh, my gosh, the system at Miami is amazing. They're going to be really good. You don't have to go away for school anymore. we got NAL deals. You know, the, the whole thing. When you get that word of mouth going in a program like, like American Heritage, like St. Thomas, like Miami Central, that's all Miami needs. You can get. 10 kids every class out of those three programs alone, that'll be studs, man. And you can build your program on that. And then you do your little national search you love to do, Gary, right? Your national, every every state has to have a kid at Miami, right, Gary? That's your thing. Every state has to be represented. Um, but but in all sense, yeah. the head coach signed the top player in nine different states not too long ago when he yeah, was at Oregon. Okay. And I know you so, love every state. So they, you love every state. They're, yeah, they're not playing so, around. So my point, my point is it's interesting to me, especially with Fleming. It's almost like when you – if you – for those of you out there that don't have a subscription, or I guess they could watch the video anyway, but if you watch that Fleming video on the YouTube channel, on our YouTube channel, the interview Gary did, you'll see you'll see that he says at one point, for a while after Chris Will was hired, he was just talking to a couple of backroom assistant, recruiting assistants, which usually the sign is you're not the plan A guy at that program, right? And then bam, all of a sudden Cristobal's on the case, right? And I'm sure it clicked with Cristobal, not just that, yeah, there's great receivers that we can get maybe a little bit easier than this kid, but damn, we need to get these American heritage kids. And guess what? Fleming and Innes love each other, man. Like those two kids are best friends. They yeah. could easily go to the same program together. You, 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 you have to, <laughs> you have to recruit Santana Fleming. It just, it just makes sense. So kudos to Mario and the kids said he's going to be talking to, um, to Josh Gaddis also. Um, you know, I think that's, that's, that's really good. And, um, and you know, we'll, we'll, We'll see what happens. All right, now, another interesting interview was with uh, St. Thomas Aquinas quarterback Tyler Aronson. And, um, Matt, to me, he's I, I, I know he's 2024, but he's, he's one of the more fascinating recruiting stories um, because he's a kid. He grew up in Palm Beach. He, he went to school in, in, in Palm Beach Gardens and literally walked out of his high school, did not tell his coach, that he was leaving his coach who had been his quarterback's coach for years and years and years. Didn't tell him he was leaving shows up at St. Thomas Aquinas and uh, now is hoping to be the quarterback there. And uh, you know, he talks a little bit about why and, and, and explains that a little bit and, and just what he's hoping to get out of it. Uh, so I thought that was a very interesting interview as well. And then um, another one is with a kid also kind of interesting a kid by the name of Jeremiah Marcelin from Miami, Norland, and he's playing defensive end, okay, at 225 pounds, um, clearly undersized to be trying to play defensive end. But the one thing I noticed about him is the motor he plays with, and he was battling those bigger kids. He didn't care that he was smaller. He was giving good effort. Um, and... Uh, He's going to try to be – he's going to be a linebacker when he goes to college, whether it's Miami or somewhere else. So the Canes are recruiting him now. He visited last Friday. He's going to be visiting again. He's a really nice kid. Matt, this kid contacted me and thanked me for doing an interview with him after the fact. He messaged me uh, the next day and said it was really nice meeting you. Thank you for doing that interview with me. I mean, that's a nice kid, okay? Uh, you don't see that very often. Um, it'll be interesting to see just as things progress where Jeremiah Marcelin fits in at Miami. Yeah, it's funny because he texted me. He texted me. He said, hold on, let me read it. Dear Mr. Shodell, you do a much better interview than Mr. Furman. Thank you for interviewing me. Uh, that's what he texted me. I don't know what he sent to you, but 
Um, but no, I, I like this. I like that kid a lot. I've talked to him also. He's nice a super, kid. Super nice kid. And uh, it's interesting because he got his first offer, very first offer, which is a special offer. And it was from Florida State. And then, bam, a few hours later, he gets the Miami offer. So, uh, so that's pretty neat. But uh, he's going to have to show some things at linebacker. A lot of schools are holding off an offering because they want to see him at linebacker. You can't really offer him as an end at 235 pounds, given his frame. You know, he can maybe fill it out, but it's, it's sort of being a project at this point. So if teams are waiting to see how he fills out. I, I do think he'll be a really good linebacker prospect. He looked like an inside linebacker to me. Yeah, so I think he'll be a good linebacker prospect. But Miami is going to have to do the due diligence. There's no harm in offering kid early and staying on him. Right, that's what we've been saying for years needs to happen at Miami, and they haven't been doing it. Uh, there was periods where a kid like this would get offered, and wouldn't hear from the program for six months to a year, and then all of a sudden, oh, we we still like you. You know, we 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 don't know what happened. Uh, the what I, you know, I don't know what excuses Miami <laughs> former coaches made. We were eating ice cream for the last year. We we we're too busy. Uh, we're so sorry. We made a horrible mistake. Will you please come to Miami, Mr. Marcelin? But now the staff is on these kids. And the, every kid I've called after they've gotten offers, they're still hearing from Miami coaches. Mario Cristobal doesn't sleep. There's like eight of them out there. So um, it all works. It all works uh, really, really well from what I can see so far recruiting-wise. Now let's take a moment and hear from our friends at Life Wallet. My name is Yuan Morales, and I am Life Wallet. Hey, yo, yo. Heads up. Strike out all my hitters, but I want everyone to knock it out of the park with Life Wallet. Life Wallet could save my life, and it could save yours too. Life Wallet, saving time, saving lives. Well, I'm heading to the airport, so I've got my Life Wallet loaded up with all my personal medical information, and um, you know, listen, you never know when you when you're gonna need your Life Wallet, Matt. In fact, you know, it reminds me of one trip that I took. I'm actually going to fly through Atlanta to go up to Greenville. And um, there was one trip I took to Atlanta, and I don't get into accidents. Like, I've, I've literally, like, been in, I think, one, really one in my entire life, and this was it. So I'm just driving along on the road in, in Atlanta. It was, a night, it was nighttime. And suddenly the car in front of me just swerves left, and I'm left sitting there, like, sitting duck and there's a little compact car stranded in the middle lane of a seven lane highway i-75 in atlanta and i just slam my brake i brace myself against the wheel and boom smacked into the car i i got hit by the airbag it was like getting punched by muhammad ali i mean it was unbelievable i was like woozy for a few minutes and stuff and of course the police came and the whole thing and you know, I was just thinking about that, you know, because life, you know, you never know when you're going to need your, your life wallet. So I got my life wallet in my phone, uh, ready to go for my trip to Atlanta. I hope I don't need it, but if I ever do, I will be, be prepared. Um, so, um, you know, for somebody who wants to be adventurous, if, if you're, if you live in proximity to, um, to South Carolina, you've got the Canes baseball team playing at Clemson this weekend. You've got Miami basketball playing in Greenville, which is like 20, 30 minutes away. And you've got the women's uh, team playing in Columbia, which is about, I think about an hour down the road. Like you could really just bounce between all these um, sporting events uh, if you want to really be really, really ambitious. Um, so if you live near South Carolina, get in the car, come on over. I'll buy you a drink. I'll, I'll be somewhere there on Main Street. You know, um, be fun. Could be a, could be a fun weekend. Um, anyway, um, there'll be a press conference at March Madness later this morning. We'll have coverage of that. Um, I'll have com complete coverage from the arena all day tomorrow. Um, I guess that's it, Matt. I don't know. Um, we may not have a good morning cane sport in the morning, though. Right. All right. That might not fit into the schedule. Uh, we'll we'll see, but uh, if if not, maybe we'll I'll, I'll do a cane sport right now or something from Greenville. We'll see what we can work out. Um, but for now, he's Matt Shodell. I'm Gary Furman. Go back in your house. Um, everybody, get fired up, man. I know not everybody cares about basketball, but get fired up for March Madness. Support the Canes. Uh, they could make a run. I hope I'm right. We'll see you next time, everybody. <laughs>